Hi everyone, Neuralar here, and this is a Dynaglow RMC 55R7 kerosene heater. I did a full review on this a couple of years ago, probably now, and a bunch of people wanted to see a wick replacement video, so I'm going to do one of those here today. I've used this kerosene heater for a few seasons, uh, but uh, this year I did a little experiment on running a kerosene heater on ordinary pump diesel fuel which is definitely a no-no, so I wouldn't recommend it, but I wanted to see what would happen. Some people say that it works just fine if you use certain additives, other people say never do it. The, uh, the technical reasons say that you should never do that, and uh, I proved that to myself here. I just use straight pump diesel, which is a mix of number one and number two this time of year during the winter, probably about 50-50. If you use straight number one diesel, it may work better, but uh, that's just almost as expensive as kerosene, so you might as well just use kerosene. What happened in this particular heater when I ran diesel through it, it took about uh, a quarter gallon of it or so, and then the wick plugged up. It got filled with waxes, tar, etc., and it no longer burned properly. I tried cleaning it with a few different methods, including uh, methyl alcohol, ethyl alcohol, etc. And uh, if I mix enough alcohol with the kerosene, it does burn reasonably well, but that's just because I'm burning a more volatile fuel. Uh, but uh, in any case, it needs a new wick. I can't really clean it. So I went to the store and I bought a new wick. Actually, I bought two wicks. Because you should always have a spare wick for your heater if you're using it for uh, some sort of emergency use. Why not? Uh, I bought these at full price. They're about uh, 10 bucks a piece. I'm sure I could find a better deal if I really cared to get a better deal, but I didn't really because this heater over here I got this for something like 25 bucks a few years ago. It was on, on clearance. I bought it in the spring and they're trying to get rid of it, so I saved enough money there. I just went and bought a couple of these wicks. I shouldn't have to worry about it again. I'm it is important to burn uh, clean fuel. Kerosene is enough of a novelty product anymore that it's difficult to find good sources of clean kerosene. Most of the time you go to a fueling station, they will have a fuel, uh, fuel pump that has uh, kerosene on it and it'll have this little sticker on this pump that says not a product of, for example, Shell or not a product of uh, Texaco or w whatever the brand gas station is. But uh, that's because the owner of that gas station bought a pump themselves and they brought in their own fuel from their own supplier. And the quality is always a little bit suspect, so some stations have really good stuff, some don't. Uh, just get a sampling from that station and see what you get. Uh, I have a particular pump around here that I get mine from. It seems reasonably good. The best kerosene is generally the kind that you get in the, in the jugs from hardware stores. And I have some of those in the basement. Uh, it's nice, clean, water-clear kerosene. It burns pretty cleanly, but uh, it's a lot more expensive. So if you're burning any meaningful amount, find a pump and buy it there. But in any case, let's get on to wick replacement. This particular wick is a DuraHeat brand. I'm not sure what the quality of this is. Maybe one of the viewers can say. It's a DH200 model. Uh, there are different qualities of wicks, and um, this may or may not be a good one, but uh, basically it's the thickness and the weave of the wick that uh, uh, determines its quality. This one doesn't seem too bad, uh, but uh, basically all these wicks are made the same. They have a cotton wicking portion and then a fiberglass burning portion. Fiberglass can withstand very high temperatures. It basically never burns down. You can't trim it, and uh, um, when you dry burn it to clean it off, which I did attempt with this other wick and it failed, um, then it uh, can burn off a lot of the deposits without consuming the wick material. Some of the very old heaters just used pure cotton, and they work, but you can't dry burn them. You have to trim the wick, uh, etc. In any case, this happens to be a DH200 from Duraheat. Let's take a quick look at the instructions. Um, it says it covers my Dynaglow RMC55R through 55R7. So it's supposed to work. We'll see if it does. Uh, they probably have instructions for DuraHeat in here, and it looks like they do. I don't have that. These are pretty much useless. Let's uh, just take a look at the heater instead. Now I've never actually opened this heater up yet, but uh, they're all pretty much the same. So I'm going to pull the knob off. It just comes straight off. It's just a friction fit. Nothing too special there. And around the bottom, you're going to find a few screws. Um, of course, remove the fuel from it. Make sure you don't spill anything. All of that good stuff. But uh, looks like there's one Phillips head here. 
I'll go around to the back. There's a couple back here. And on this side, there's two over here. So I'm just going to remove all of those. And then the cover should pop uh, straight off the top. I almost forgot one important but very obvious step. Uh, probably not worth mentioning, but of course you have to remove this thing. It's glass. You don't want it to fall and break. So we'll remove that. And with all the screws out, I should just be able to reach in here and lift this whole assembly up. And there's the actual guts of the heater, which is kind of interesting. This is the little wobble weight that uh, makes your heater shut down. If you uh, tilt it too much, you ratchet the uh, wick up. And here's the extinguish button, which just bumps that weight, which pops the wick back down. Anyway, for the uh, igniter here, there's a couple of screws, one on that side, one on the other. Over here, we take both of those loose, and then take this screw up here loose, and we can uh, take off the uh, draft stopper, or whatever you call this, and the ignition. And uh, basically, there's just uh, screws. You take the screws out, and it comes apart. Uh, not terribly complicated, but I'm going to take these two off, remove this, take this one off, pull this off, and uh, then we'll look at it again. With those pieces out of the way, there's now these four wing nuts on here that uh, hold the whole assembly down to the tank. And uh, you can just take all four of these loose. You may need to get a pliers in there or something to loosen them because some of them are torqued down and relatively difficult to access. But uh, take all, all of these loose and then pull the assembly out. And there is the wick. If you uh, don't like kerosene smell, you probably don't want to handle this with your bare hands, but uh, I don't really care. So at this point, you can see where the wick is positioned. And uh, depending on the brand of replacement wick, I would recommend uh, just keeping track of about the proper height when you install the new wick. In this case, it looks like it is about this second line down, line B as it is labeled here. So I'm going to stall it just a little bit higher than that to give myself a little bit of extra room. Now if I crank the knob all the way up, if I install it too high, uh, the flame will be too high, but uh, I just won't crank the knob all the way up. But I don't want to make it too high because if I put it way up here, when I try to extinguish the flame, it won't extinguish. So I'm just going to line it up with line B. Now I believe the spec on this particular heater is 8 millimeters of wick height at full rise, so I'm going to make that more like 10 and uh, that'll give me a little bit more flexibility when the wick starts tarring up, like this one did, to uh, keep burning, just by cranking the wick up a little bit higher. But to get this wick out, uh, there's some uh, metal tabs here that clamp the wick in. So we're just going to remove the wick from those metal tabs and set it aside. Fold it up, remove it. And uh, here are these sharp metal pieces. So you take your new wick, you fold this one up, stick it inside, <clears throat> and re-expand it inside this one to the proper height, and then uh, just punch these little tabs into the wick so that it's just like this one inside there at the proper height. Now I do want to mention that it is absolutely critical that you uh, make sure that the height wick is the same height all the way around. Even a millimeter or even half a millimeter of height difference around the circumference of this is going to cause your heater to burn unevenly and poorly. So it's critical that it is even. Now I also want to mention some things about wick trimming in this case. If you get it uneven you think, oh I'll just trim the wick down. That doesn't work very well. These wicks are not designed to be trimmed. You can trim off a little bit at the top, but it really doesn't work very well. This is fiberglass. It is not consumed by flame, unlike the old cotton wicks. So you really can't trim that down. You really just need to get it the right height. I'm trying to avoid getting kerosene all over my camera here, but I just wanted to show you what's wrong with this particular wick. Uh, with some aggressive clean, I may be able to use it again, but the problem is that it just doesn't work very well again, and it's not water. I did try removing the water. You can do that with alcohol. You can take this out, soak it in alcohol, let it air dry. Um, you can certainly remove water. That's not a problem. You don't have to replace your wick just for that reason. But the reason that this wick is no good is because it is contaminated with uh, carbon buildup here. Carbon, tar, etc. from that uh, number one, number two diesel fuel mix that I tried to burn. 
Uh, this does feel like a really nice quality wick. It's kind of a shame. I may actually keep it just as a, a spare. But uh, in any case, that's the brand of the original. It is a Glow Wick 200B. Uh, this is also a Model 200 that I'm going to replace it with. DH200 because it's from Duraheat. And just looking at the construction quality, they both look pretty much the same. In fact, the replacement wick that I got is a little bit longer. Some models of heaters require a longer wick than others. Now in this case I know that the wick is long enough because it's longer than the one I'm replacing, but that will help it wick just a little bit better. In any case, I'm going to take this new wick, put it into, into here, and uh, smash these tabs into the wick, and then I'll be good. And with the new wick secured into this carrier, roughly uh, even all the way around, you can simply insert it back uh, over this tube here, which is actually where the air comes up to uh, support proper combustion. Now there is a gasket here, and this gasket is pretty critical. Make sure you don't uh, nick that and that it's in the proper place. Uh, in case you get some sort of volatile fuel in here, say you're mixing alcohol with it to attempt to burn the wick off, uh, this keeps those vapors out so that you don't have any sort of danger there. Uh, I know that this looks dirty, but I did scrub this clean. All of the uh, vent holes are open. So we'll just put this on here. Make sure that the carrier is positioned so that uh, our ratchet wick adjustment is in the front. At this point, it's good to check the uh, wick height uh, adjustment on here. I haven't tightened the wing nuts down yet, so it uh, will compress slightly yet. But uh, this particular heater has a spec of 8 millimeters plus or minus 1 millimeter, which happens to be about 5 sixteenths of an inch. And I have it set to about 6 sixteenths of an inch. So just slightly higher than what the spec is which is what I want. Different heaters have different specs, but this is about the correct height for this particular heater, and if I extinguish it, the wick pops down plenty far to extinguish the flame. So, at this point, it's just a matter of reassembling it, putting this piece back on, and the igniter back on, and uh, tightening everything down. So I have the draft guard and the tower back on, and I'm just going to test this out, push the knob on temporarily, just to make sure that uh, everything operates the way that it should. It ratchets up, goes to the correct height, extinguish button works, the igniter works as it should. So, looks like everything here is good. I'll go ahead and put the body of the heater back on. It's just held on by these five screws, as shown initially really couldn't be a whole lot simpler, and the wick replacement should be complete. This really isn't that difficult a job. Anybody can do it. It only takes 10 minutes or so. Uh, smelly kerosene hands, but otherwise it's not really a problem. The heater's back together, so just the finishing touches here. And now all that's left is to try it out. I realized that I didn't mention the symptoms when uh, that this heater had. That meant I had to replace the wick. Basically, uh, you get soot, uh, uh, bad smells, etc. But the root cause is always the same. And the cause is that your flame isn't high enough. That's the reason why this knob ratchets up and only lets you adjust between a very narrow range. That's because if you turn it too low, it smokes, doesn't burn completely, and uh, just uh, doesn't work right. You need to make sure that the entire assembly here is glowing bright red. If it's not, that means that you have poor combustion. In this case, the wick got clogged and it couldn't wick enough fuel up to burn properly. And that's why I had to replace the wick. Um, it's always going to be the same symptoms. It doesn't wick properly. If it's water contamination, you can dry the wick out and reuse it. If it's uh, a fuel contamination, you could probably soak it in benzene or something like that, but it's really not practical. Best thing to do is just buy a new wick. Very simple. Uh, takes about 10 minutes to replace. So I'm now going to fuel this up and test it out. Make sure that my wick replacement was successful.
I do have water clear K1 kerosene in here. Now, I'm not going to fill the tank completely just in case there's a problem. I just don't want to have to mess with the full tank of fuel. But uh, I will now slip this tank into the heater just to get the lower reservoir filled. It burns for about an hour off of that lower reservoir. And after about 20 minutes of soaking that wick, we'll light it up and uh, make sure that it works properly. And it's filling up the lower reservoir, holds about half a quart or so of uh, kerosene. Looks like there's some dust in here, I'll blow that out. But we'll let this soak here in my garage. I'm doing this in my garage just in case it smokes or something the first time. Uh, but after soaking for about 20 minutes, we'll come back, light it up, and see how it works. All right, it's been about half an hour, and uh, we'll crank the wick up here and see if we can light it. Should be fully saturated now with kerosene. This particular lighter is uh, nearly out of butane, so let's see if we can get this thing to work first. All right then, that's embarrassing. I'll get a different lighter. All right, got a new lighter here. I uh, don't use the actual ignition, electronic ignition on this particular uh, heater because, well, it doesn't work very well, and uh, I prefer to just use a match. So, we will see how this heater works with its new wick. And I think I'm just going to uh, leave the camera here and let it record the uh, warm-up sequence. It is about 40 degrees Fahrenheit in the garage right now, so it will take a little bit longer than what it normally would take for this to warm up. This particular heater does emit a fair amount of uh, smoke and soot and such on startup, so I always start it up in my garage. Otherwise, it works pretty well. And now it looks like it's burning pretty well. I actually have to uh, turn it down a little bit to extinguish any of the orange flame. And it's burning exactly like it should now. Before the wick replacement, this whole uh, catalytic converter, or whatever you want to call it, flame spreader, uh, would not glow orange. And it would emit a large amount of soot. So now it's working pretty well. I'm going to take this heater inside, and I'm going to call this wick replacement a success. So thanks for watching.